Could you give some practical examples of what would my love for myself motivate me to do for myself? Right. So, so supplementary question number one is what would my love for myself motivate me to do for myself? There's two parts to that question as we covered in, the, in another question. Mm -hmm. Two parts, as in a summary, is first part. I would never betray myself. I would never betray my spiritual, emotional, physical and sexual um, feelings, feelings or, desires. or desires in order to do anything for somebody else. I would never betray myself. The second part of the, of the statement means that I would always take full responsibility for myself in uh -huh. every aspect of my life, sexual, emotional, physical and spiritual. I would take full responsibility for myself. So, so if we now put all this together and give, come up with some pra practical examples, that would be, that would be great in yep. terms of understanding how this works in a practical environment. Okay, so let's talk about something that's really um, maybe a hotter topic for people and that, or something that we hear a lot about and that is as the relationship progresses, the woman feels less sexually interested than the man and the man wants sex and the woman doesn't want sex. Yes. So if I'm the woman, how do I approach that situation? If you're the woman? Yes. In terms of? Well, um, if I, so for example, if I'm the woman and I feel I don't want to have sex. Now the first part of your answer to the supplementary question was I shouldn't betray that feeling. Hmm. So I shouldn't have sex when I don't want to have exactly. sex. Exactly, exactly. But the second part of the question is, am I taking responsibility for everything no. that's inside of me and am I loving the way God would love? And the answer is no. No. If you're, if you're denying sex to your partner, you aren't taking full responsibility. So the answer is no. So the question then becomes, what would the woman do if she saw this problem within herself? She would want to change it. She would want to do something about it. She would want to work through the reasons why she feels the way she feels. Because she would say, wouldn't she, I, I want to love in the way God loves and God yep. created me with As a sexual, sexual desire for my mate. Yep. And if it's not if it's existing, not there, there's then a reason. There's a reason. Either I want something, I want a betrayal from my partner, I want them to do something for me that I'm not willing to do for them or yep. a codependent situation. Yes. Or that I have an issue around my sexuality. Yes. Yeah. And usually for such a woman, there'd be a lot of rage that she has probably. Passive aggressive rage, I suggest. Passive aggressive in the sense that a withdrawal of something is usually the passive road that we take mm -hmm. in order to express our rage. So she's obviously got some rage within her about sex, sexuality. Mm -hmm. or and that, that exists whether her partner is, has any problem or not to be frank. Mm -hmm. So she needs to address that particular issue. Now, if she feels that she can't have sex with her partner because she doesn't love him anymore, then she needs to honour that feeling. Say, Not look, betrayed. I don't love you anymore yes. and I can't have sex with you because I don't love you anymore. Now, of course, there's a high likelihood the relationship would break up under those circumstances. And that's what she's probably avoiding because mm -hmm. she wants the security of financial security or other forms of security, even maybe wants the affection of her husband without having to give anything to him. And these are all unloving things that she's asking of her husband as a result. So if she was truly taking responsibility, she would first ask herself, she would say to herself, well, okay, why am I withholding sex? Why am I... Now, don't, I'm not suggesting she needs to give her husband's sex when she doesn't feel like doing it, because that would be a betrayal of herself. Yes. But I'm also stating that she now needs to look at the reason why emotional, she needs to take responsibility and look at the emotional reason why she's doing it mm -hmm. and actually address it from God's perspective. Mm -hmm. That's what she, most people don't do. Yeah. So they do the first, but they don't do the second. Yeah. They don't take the full responsibility part. Or they do the, or they they betray and then don't. And then don't do it. Yeah, usually they do one or the other. Yeah. They don't do both. When it comes to, um, you know, what would my love of myself motivate me to do for myself, usually I'll either do one thing or the other thing, but I won't consider both things at the same time. Yeah. When I say both things, one thing is I say, no, I can't betray myself anymore, so I'm not going to, in this example we've given, have sex with my husband anymore, yeah. right? but then refuse completely to take personal responsibility for the fact that God created you as a sexual being. You're shutting down all of your sexual desires. You're living with a person you don't desire to have sex with and there's a heap of reasons why that you're now avoiding. Yeah. 
And if you had true self-responsibility, you wouldn't avoid them. You, whether you, you were with a partner or not, actually. Exactly. Whether you're with a partner or not, you wouldn't avoid them. Yeah. You, you would still want to address or, and, and, and work through the issues. And what I see a lot of people doing is staying in the relationship under those circumstances, refusing to work through the personal issues that, that cause it to happen, while at the same time projecting at their partner that they've got to care for them financially, they've got to care for them physically, they've got to have all of these nice emotions towards them, while at the same time there's this rage within them pa mm. in a passive-aggressive manner projected at the relationship. Now, of course, such a relationship is never going to work. Yeah. So you can't expect such a relationship to work when, when you're not doing both of these things that are involved in love of self. Yeah. You have to do both if the relationship is going to survive. Mm. You've got to do both. If you expect that you're going to be able to focus on the betrayal of yourself and not focus on taking self-responsibility then you're not going to have any decent relationships at all. And you're not actually fully complying with the first question of no. love of self, are no, you? No, not at you, all. You're saying, oh, I can't betray myself, that's loving myself, but actually you're not fully loving yourself because... Because you're not doing the second thing. Yeah. Which is take personal responsibility for the fact that God created you with sexual organs, God created you with sexual desire. You don't have any in the situation you're in and there's got to be a reason. Yeah. And take responsibility for the fact that you need to address the reason. A, there might be spiritual, emotional, physical and sexual reasons why you have this particular issue. And if you truly loved yourself, not your partner, yourself, mm -hmm. if you truly loved yourself, you would be fully committed to dealing with it. You wouldn't be spending time avoiding it. You wouldn't be going around talking to your girlfriends, saying how bad it is and trying to diffuse the issue from yourself. Mm -hmm. You'd be focused on, this is a problem for me. I've got a problem here. I need to work through the issues. Now, is it that I don't love my husband? Or is it that half the things he does make me angry all the time and I'm just angry with him most of the time? <laughs> so and, this is and my so way. This of... is my way of passively, aggressively controlling him? Yeah. Or is it that you want to control over somebody else, so you want somebody to love you but without loving in return? What are your underlying motivations? You need to work it out because you're not loving the way God loves. Yeah. You, if you ask yourself the first question, you're not loving the way God lo loves. You, you, the second question is, do I really have a desire to love the way God's love? If you're not taking personal responsibility for your life, emotions, sexual feelings, physical needs and spiritual needs, if you're not taking personal responsibility for any of those things, any one of those things, mm -hmm. you are not loving the way God loves. And if you refuse to take responsibility for them, you refuse to change it, you also have no desire to love the way God loves yeah. either. Yeah. You're proving to both yourself and your partner, that you don't really have a desire to way, love the way God loves. Mm -hmm. so, so that's a, a good example of what we might do in those situations. All right, well, we have another example. Sure. What about cleaning up around myself in the house? Uh, how about we go back to the first example? Oh, and do it from the And other do side? it from the male's yes, perspective. let's do that. Now, I meant to say that and I forgot. Yeah, yep. how about we do that? Yes, yep. so, so if I'm the man in the relationship and my wife is withholding sex, for whatever reason, mm -hmm. what would I do if I loved myself? Mm -hmm. right? Now, if I loved myself, I wouldn't betray myself. In other words, I wouldn't try shutting down my own desire for my wife I would, just in order to avoid crying or some, some emotional pain. I wouldn't try to avoid sexual interactions with her um, or, um, or, or any of those kind of things. So, and by that, let's clarify that. You, you're not forcing yourself upon your no, wife, but no. you're expressing your desire for her. Exactly. I would say to her, I want to have sex with you. You know, I love you and <laughs> yeah. I desire you. You're beautiful and, and yeah. you know, yeah. I, want to, I want to pleasure you and all yeah. those kind of things. So, uh, you know, you would obviously still express all of those things if you didn't betray yourself. Mm -hmm. However, you wouldn't have sex with your wife because you know that having sex with her would force her into betraying herself. Yeah. So you wouldn't have sex with her. But then what do you do about your physical desire for sexual relations? Yeah. Well, of course, you've got to take some personal responsibility for that. So it looks like that masturbation and other forms of taking responsibility <laughs> for that are going to have to increase. Yeah. Now, you wouldn't use tools to do such things. When I say tools, you wouldn't use things like pornography yeah. to take sexual responsibility. In other words, you wouldn't use pornography to heighten your sexual desire and then have a release if you were ta taking full responsibility for yourself because mm -hmm. that would be using another woman 
a person who's obviously a willing accomplice, but it doesn't matter. From God's perspective, it's not a way of loving yourself either. Yeah. So what you would need to do is consider how your sex life is going to look if you're alone but still desiring your partner, your, your, the other half of yourself. Mm -hmm. You would not force her into having sex with you. You wouldn't manipulate her, coerce her mm -hmm. into having sex with you. But then you also wouldn't stop fulfilling your own sexual desires, even if she got angry with you about that. Yeah. And what I see a lot of women doing is not giving their partner uh, any of their sexual needs or a few, a few, you know, most of their sexual needs are not met. And yet at the same time, demanding their partner doesn't do anything about that for their own sexual pleasure. Yeah. And that's unloving to actually have that expectation. So, so from both sides, there's going to be things they're going to need to work through. Now, if the guy feels angry that his partner is not, uh, you know, have, doesn't want sex with him, then I suggest if he was taking personal responsibility for his emotions, he would work through the reason why he feels so angry about that. Mm -hmm. And that would include things working through his sadness about not being desired, his sadness about not having uh, the sexual approval of his partner, and a number of other things. So, you know, he would take responsibility for dealing with those emotions if he truly loved himself. Yeah, great. So I just want to ask a few clarifiers then on the man's end. Mm -hmm. so, so obviously if... If he has a sexual desire for his wife and she doesn't have any desire for him, he's not expecting her. If he loved himself, he wouldn't betray his feelings, so he wouldn't stop having them. Yep. But he would also take responsibility for whatever that brings up in him. So he might be sad or angry, as you said, and he wouldn't. He would recognise that if I loved in the way God loves, I wouldn't have this feeling. I wouldn't be sad or angry. Right. Um, but I also wouldn't have a desire for another woman. Exactly. So if I did... Or I wouldn't start projecting my sexual desires on other women yeah. if I truly loved my partner. Yeah. Because I'd only want to have sex with my partner. Yeah. If I truly loved her, I'd be focused on her. I wouldn't be focused on anyone else. Yes. Okay. And then there comes um, And by the, the way, question. if that wasn't happening, then I have emotional issues of anger to work through myself. There's a lot of men respond in that way because their wife or partner is not giving them uh, sexual approval or sexual attention, they then go and seek sexual attention or approval from somewhere else. Yeah. Um, and that's all that's avoiding is their own neediness for sexual attention and approval. So that's not taking self-responsibility? No, not at all. Okay, then finally, is there a point in a relationship <coughs> where love of self, either the man or woman's, mm -hmm. Or the might be same sex partnership, but mm -hmm. if one party is not interested in having a sexual relationship, relationship with the other, with the other, and the other one is mm -hmm. for a long period of time, mm -hmm. is there a point where the love of self of the individual who does and who is continually um, rebuffed, or mm -hmm. um, is there a point where it's loving to not be in that relationship? Well, um, see, now you're getting on to questions associated with. What does the love of my partner? Uh, oh, am I my, sorry? What would yeah. the love of my partner's love of herself want to do for herself? Okay, you know, sure. So like to me, with this particular question, yeah, we're really just focused on what's my response sure. towards loving sure. myself. Now, okay. yes, if I felt that my partner did not love me, right, and I felt that I had to betray myself in order to be with her and I mm -hmm. felt that she didn't let me take responsibility for my own needs. So mm -hmm. sexually, let's say she, every time I masturbated, she doesn't want to give me sex, but every time I masturbate, let's say she projects that rage at me or is, gets upset with me about it, then I would say, well, you're out of line now mm -hmm. and to stay with you is not loving myself anymore. So there's a high likelihood under those circumstances, of course, that, that the relationship will break up. Sure. Because obviously the wife, in the, in the example I've just given, doesn't want to address her problems emotionally. She's also projecting at her husband that he has to, or the other part, partner, that he or she has to do what the person who's in denial wants. Mm. And to do that is very unloving. To live in that circumstance is very unloving towards yourself. Yeah. So you would choose under those circumstances, say, okay, until you work through this issue, I love you. And I desire you, and I'm not going to go off and run off with anybody else or any of those kind of things, but I'm just not going to be with you. 
yeah. until you work through the issue because you're still getting all your other things met with no desire to address this particular issue. And if, if you truly loved me, so this is where it gets to the second is, set of questions, yeah. if you truly loved me, you wouldn't do that. And if you truly wanted to love the way God loves, you wouldn't do that. Yeah. And if you truly loved yourself, you wouldn't even do that. Mm -hmm. So, you know, you, you would actually draw the line somewhere there in terms of what happens. Yeah, but that doesn't mean you'd go off and run away with somebody else. Does that make sense? Yes. If you truly love your partner, you're not going to, just because you're not living together anymore, you wouldn't be having sex with everybody else waiting for your partner. That, I see a lot of people think that way, mm -hmm. that they believe they can do that, you know, that they have this very sad sex with everybody else. But that's fulfilling a whole heap of other addictions that they're unwilling to address within themselves. And if you love yourself, you'd be motivated to address all your own addictions. Yeah. So you would not... If you, if you decided to leave your partner while still loving them because of what they're choosing to do towards you or towards themselves, you leave your partner, and if you claim you still love them, you wouldn't then go off having sexual relationships with other people yeah. be, because to do so would not be taking responsibility for other emotions that you actually have within yourself. And it's almost a betrayal of the emotions you have within yourself. Exactly, it is. Yeah. So it's yeah. both of those things. So. Yeah. So I see a lot of people doing that or choosing to do that. You know, you see a lot of men in these kind of relationships going to porn for the same reason. You know, that, that's out of harmony with love, obviously, because all you're trying to do there is you're, try, you're exorcising your rage yes. with your partner by trying to involve other people in your, now if, in, your, in your sexual life. If you truly loved your partner, you wouldn't want to do that, yeah. right? And a lot of it's driven by frustration and anger and, and deeper emotions of neediness and sadness that you're unwilling to feel. Once you feel your way through all of those emotions, you won't have a desire to feel all of those things because you'll love yourself the way God loves. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So you, you will therefore know what the love of yourself would do. And it certainly wouldn't uh, cause you to want to degrade your soul in any way. It wouldn't cause you to want to engage someone else sexually when you have a love for one person mm -hmm. and so forth. So, so this is where we often uh, make huge mistakes with relationships. So what we see happening in relationships is sexually one party closes down, the other party then thinks that that gives them a licence mm. <laughs> to basically get their sexual needs met from everywhere else. Yeah. It doesn't. It only gives them a licence to have their sexual needs met by themselves. <laughs> Does that make yeah, sense? Yeah, absolutely. Um, which they've always had all the way along. So it's not like a license. It's a, it's a, <laughs> it's actually a, per, a person taking responsibility for themselves. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Great. Yeah. Thanks for clarifying. So that's a, a good example of how we would, if we loved ourselves, what we would do. Of course, there's whole questions about what would our partner do if she loved us, and what, you know. But we need to, we ask, need to answer ask those. Them. Separately. And if you like, we can revisit that one issue all the way through if, if you want. Yeah, we can. It's use a that. common issue. It's I a think. common issue. Yeah. 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 Okay. So let's have a few more examples. A few then. more. Yeah. All right. This one is about cleaning up after myself. Yes. So. What would love for myself motivate me to do in that situation? Well, if I truly love myself and I'm totally self-responsible, that means that I would, I would cook, prepare food for myself. I would have enough. I would get enough money in order to prepare food for myself in the environment in which we lived. I would prepare food for myself. I would clean up after myself. I would make sure that my environment was always tidy and neat. I would make sure that I'm never tripping over anything because if I loved myself, I wouldn't you know, have my clothes on the floor and I'd have everything have its own place. Mm -hmm. If I truly loved myself, I would care for everything that I've ever purchased unless I didn't want it anymore. And then if you don't want it anymore, you should give it away so someone else can care for it. Yes. <laughs> then, so, so there's all these things that I'd do if I truly loved myself. Mm -hmm. Now, we see often in relationships these things don't happen. Mm -hmm. So, for example, a man has this viewpoint that he's out working all day, so he comes home, strips off, has a shower, leaves his, leaves his clothes in the, in the um, bathroom. bathroom, you know, and th three days later, they're still in, his ba in the bathroom unless the wife picks them up and puts them somewhere, right? Mm -hmm. It's very unloving on his part. It doesn't matter how hard he's working. He's not taking responsibility for himself. Then, she, of course, he walks out of the bathroom into the kitchen and says, where's my beer or where's my, you know, drink, you know, that I need? And that is unloving towards himself mm -hmm. as well. Mm -hmm. 
because if he truly loved himself, he would want to care for that need if that's the need he had, even if it's out of harmony with God's love of self, he would still care for himself. Then he sits down and demands a meal. Like that's also unloving towards himself. Because if he truly loved himself, he would want to get up and make his own meal. Mm -hmm. Because that's what you do when you care for yourself. Well, and also you take a lot of pleasure in that, don't you? You think, what do I feel like eating? Yeah, I'm going to make that. Oh, I enjoy that. And there's a whole pleasure you have if you do sincerely love yourself. Not for everyone, yourself. of course. Like, not for everyone initially when they're learning, you know. No. There's not a pleasure for many because they're in codependent addiction with these things. They, they come home and they think that because I've worked all day, I should be able to drop my clothes on the floor and somebody else come along and tidy that. Yeah. And they think that because I've worked a day, I should be able to work, go into the kitchen and have a meal on, on my, you know, dinner table because that's what someone would do if they loved me. Mm -hmm. And it's not what someone would do if they loved you. It's what you should have done for yourself if you loved if you. If you loved you. Yeah. Now, if your partner decides to do those things for you, then it's a gift and therefore should be thanked, not expected. Right? So if the partner dis notices that he hasn't tidied up the thing and let, let's say he's left it there for 10 minutes while he's doing something else and she notices and she wants to give him a gift, she could pick up his clothes and put them away or put them in the wash or whatever. He, she could choose to do it and give him a gift if she wanted to. But if he expects it, he's out of harmony with love of self. Also, if he, he, she decides that she wants to cook him a meal and puts a meal on the table after he's had a shower or whatever, and she decides that she wants to do that because she likes doing that and, and she enjoys that process, then that's also a gift. He can't expect it. Mm -hmm. If he expects it, he's out of harmony with love of self. He's also out of harmony with love of her, by the way, mm -hmm. but, but that's the second question. Mm -hmm. He's really firstly out of harmony with love of himself because love of himself would demand that he actually takes personal responsibility for himself. Mm. Right? We see a lot of children don't learn this in, in their relationships with parents because a lot of women go around cleaning up after their children from a very, very young age. They clean up after their children, clean up after children. Of course, the children grow into adults that then expect love to be cleaning up after them. Mm -hmm. And so they expect their partner to clean up after them. And it's not very loving. Mm. And of course, sooner or later, the partner feels that it's not very loving too. And if you're getting, reaching a point in a relationship where the only time you take care of yourself or look after yourself or pick up after yourself is when your partner is getting Asking you angry to, or with getting you, angry. then yeah. there's a huge indication, isn't there, that, there's a, that you're doing, avoiding the love of yourself. Totally avoiding the love of yourself. And also you're avoiding the love of your partner. Yeah. You're even avoiding the issue of her love of herself yeah. or, you know, your partner's love of themselves. Yeah. Because, because if you're expecting somebody else to do what you should be doing for yourself, then basically you're placing the responsibility of your life in, the hand, in their hands and that is not a loving action. Mm -hmm. God doesn't do that. Mm -hmm. You know, if we want to love in a pure way, we take full responsibility for our, everything in our entire life. Yeah. So even if our partner doesn't cook for us for an entire year, we'd come home, cook for ourselves, at least cook for ourselves. <laughs> because that's what love for yourself would do. Would do. Yeah. Love for yourself wouldn't sit there in a you know, big grumbling mess saying, what's the problem with my partner? Love for yourself also wouldn't sit there and starve. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you go, oh, my partner's not cleaning up after, you know, not, not doing clean up after me and cooking my meals for me, so I'm not going to do it for me. I'm just going to sit here and mope the fact that I'm not loved or whatever. Yeah. Love for yourself wouldn't do that. Because if you truly love yourself, you wouldn't even feel unloved by doing it. You would feel that everything's fine still. Yeah. And so therefore you wouldn't have the projections upon your partner, the demands upon your partner, the expectations of your partner, which obviously is going to make for a very easy relationship from your partner's perspective. Yeah. And, uh, and if both of it, you did that in a relationship, you'd have a pretty good relationship. Each of you taking personal responsibility for your entire own life, you'd have a pretty good relationship. After a while, when you live together, you decide to share certain tasks. Or yes. <clears throat> so in other words, like I fix all the computers in the house, but you cook a lot of the meals now but because it takes time to fix computers and it takes time to cook meals. <laughs> yes. And you enjoy that. And I, well, I don't know if I really no. enjoy the fixing of computers, but I, I know I enjoy it more than you do. <laughs> yeah. Well, I think you can do it more than I can. And I can do it better. So. Which is perhaps a problem for me. Yeah, <laughs> but, but this is what you would do. You know, you start negotiating, I suppose you could call it. I don't see it as such because it's really a desire again. I, I, feel I drawn look by after my... our computers because yeah. we need them. And I feel drawn by my desire to yep. do something that 
makes your life easier and I enjoy doing it. It's yeah. a real gift, I feel, for myself and for you. And so it's just something that's evolved. It's not something we sat down yeah. and talked about. And but, also but if you I cook feel, meals. Yeah, I cook yeah. meals still. But, it, but if I feel you don't want to cook in a certain night, I say you don't want to cook tonight, don't do it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and generally I'll do it yeah. um, also. Like, or if I don't feel like doing it, then we might just get something that's stuck in the fridge somewhere or, you know, something simple or whatever. And if we both feel like, don't feel like doing that, then we both starve that evening. Yeah. <laughs> but we don't see it as a lack of love, yeah. right, um, for, for the other person. Mm -hmm. It might be a lack of love for yourself. But, yeah. but the key is to focus on this first question. Um, we, we would focus on both aspects of this first question and we would always never betray ourselves, mm -hmm. but we would also, at the same time, always take personal responsibility. Yeah. For, and, and what I see uh, the majority of people doing is not taking personal responsibility emotionally. So they'll take responsibility for physical things, but not take responsibility for their feelings about physical things. Yeah. You, you see this happening a lot. And, uh, and that's because you don't love yourself in those areas yet. Mm. Well, let's talk about some other ones because I think that'll highlight that mm -hmm. a little bit more. Sure. So um, here's an, an example of that we've written down. Asking our partner questions about our personal appearance in order to feel better about ourselves. Yes. So you see this happening a lot where, where one or the other, you see a, a lot of jokes in movies, don't you, about the man constantly getting asked by his gorgeous wife, um, that, uh, you know, does her bum look big in this, yeah, you yeah. know, pair of jeans or something? And he thinks, of course, that she's pretty hot no matter what <laughs> a lot of the times, but, uh, but she's still asking and he still has to supply the right answer. Yes. And, and, and the wrong answer is definitely, no, yeah, your bum is big, you know. Yes. <laughs> That's the wrong answer. <laughs> in other words, she has a demand of a certain answer. Now, if you loved yourself and you were on the receiving end of such a request, you would never betray yourself. So you'd never betray your own opinion. So if you felt your wife's bum looks big, you'd tell her, your bum looks big. You asked me. <laughs> two days ago, you came to me and said, is this jumper too dirty to wear to town? And I went, yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, I had worn it for three weeks yes. straight, I think. <laughs> so I understand. But, uh, and so I came and asked Mary, uh, do you think this jumper's a bit too dirty to wear to town? And Mary said, yes. I go, no worries. <laughs> Take it off and put on a new one, you know. Yeah. And, but, and this is the thing, is you, you would tell the other person your true opinion. Mm -hmm. That If you had said to me under those circumstances, no, nah, I think it's still all right, while you're thinking, what in the hell is he doing? <laughs> like, where in that? And then you're betraying yourself. Yeah. And that wouldn't be an act of love of yourself, right? Mm -hmm. And so, so this is what we would do. We would, we would love ourselves in the situation. But also, love yourself takes personal responsibility. So... In the example you gave, which was again... Which was asking, so say now I'm asking you, what do you think of this dress all oh, yes. the time? Yeah. It's so from my perspective, love of myself, what would that... Yes, if you loved yourself, you wouldn't feel a demand that your partner makes you feel good about something you don't feel good about. Mm -hmm. So if you loved yourself, what you would do is you would go, okay, I think my bum looks big in this. <laughs> and the only reason why I'm asking my partner, you know, his opinion, is because I want to hear from him that it doesn't look big. <laughs> in other words, I want to hear from him something that I don't believe and probably therefore are never going to accept, mm. which means that you'll constantly ask the same question over and over again, yeah. which, which invariably happens. And, and under those circumstances, I'm not really loving myself. I'm not loving my body. Now, if I think my bum is big, then do something about it. If you truly loved yourself and took responsibility for yourself and you thought your own bottom was big, you would not put, say to your partner that he's got to make it look little <laughs> while it's big. Yeah. You would take responsibility for that fact that your bottom is big yeah. and there's a reason. And yeah. you need to address the emotional reasons primarily because emotional drives the physical you know, eating and other exactly. issues. Yeah you would address the emotional reasons as to why you've allowed your bum to get big rather than always wanting your husband to tell you that it's not as big as, it, as you think it is. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so 
So if you were the husband, though, in this circumstance, you wouldn't betray yourself. So you'd always say... You, but you also would take responsibility for your feelings about it. So, so in other words, you wouldn't get angry and frustrated every time your wife asks you to repent. You'd just say to her, look, darling, you're not wanting to deal with an emotion here. Yeah. Right? And you need to stop asking me because you're not just you're just not dealing with an emotion. Mm -hmm. You would also uh, feel your feelings about being placed in this position of having to constantly supply an addictive need to your partner. Mm -hmm. In other words, the partner wants to feel like she feels good, and she's wanting you rather than address it herself. She's wanting you to make her feel good. If you took responsibility for yourself, right? you would feel about that. You would feel, how does that feel, being constantly asked to supply something? Mm -hmm. Even if you think it's true. Like, so even if you think, like I often say to you, like, yeah, your, your size 22 ass fits into those nice <laughs> size 8 jeans really well. But, so it's a bit of a joke. Yeah. But, but in the end, I've got to ask myself under those circumstances, why do I even need to say that? Yes. That there's something emotionally that I need to address there that would cause me, unless it's a joke, of course, yeah. that would cause me to want to sort of have some kind of passive-aggressive response to the projection coming at me. Mm. If I, so if I, if I didn't betray myself, I wouldn't withhold the truth from you. Yeah. I wouldn't withhold the truth from you in an effort to avoid how you might feel towards me as a result. Because you, you know, many people deny sex for weeks on end just for the wrong answer. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, so, and I wouldn't, I wouldn't. That wouldn't scare me at all. I'd still yeah. say exactly what I felt. Yeah. But I would also feel about having to be being placed in the position of constantly supplying the addictive need of my partner, and that is something that if I took responsibility for, I would discuss with my partner what. Mm -hmm. I am, you know, I feel like I'm, you know, pushed around by this feeling that you want, you know, from me all the time. I feel that you're not addressing the underlying emotional need that you have to address it. And, and it does make me feel frustrated. And I, and I do feel like I need to look at why I feel so frustrated about it in the sense of what, what within me does it make me feel? It makes me feel like I'm being set up yeah. and makes me feel like I'm being... Potentially, you know, if I give the wrong answer, I, I'm going to have some kind of bad thing happen in the future. Yeah. And, and I'm scared of that. Yeah. And, and I have to acknowledge my fears of that and work through why I'm so afraid of that. Mm. And that, that's what I would do if I took responsibility for myself. So the whole issue of taking responsibility for yourself, you can see if both partners took responsibility for themselves the whole thing wouldn't even happen in the first well, place. Well, that's what I was going to say, because from the other end, for, say I'm the woman in this scenario, which oh, has happened yeah. many times, uh, I wouldn't even exit the bedroom and say, look, how does my bum look in this or how do I look in this? Because I'd be standing there going, you know what, I don't feel good about my appearance. Yeah. And if I love the way God loves, I, I want to deal with that. I want to be at peace with how I look. Yeah. I'm going to feel... Feel how bad I feel how about bad my I personal feel appearance. About my, and also how afraid I am of how other people perceive Perception, me or whatever, yeah. whatever And is the this even is. real? Yes. Like a lot of women, I feel, have very unrealistic viewpoints of their own bodies. You see this a lot. And this is one of the primary causes of diseases, such, well, well, what we call mental illnesses, mm -hmm. such, such as... Um, anorexia. Bulimia, bulimia and anorexia. Yeah. You know, the, it's because of the, the unhealed emotions re revolving around a person's perception of oneself. And these perceptions of oneself need to be healed mm -hmm. rather than projected on the partner. Uh, and the partner needs to focus the person who's doing it on the healing of it rather than supplying every, you know, response that their unhealed partner desires. Yeah. And all that does is just feed the addiction and make it worse. But it's never going to resolve the problem. It's never going to have resolution. And, you know, the thing, beautiful thing about God's truth is it always is looking for resolution. So, so in a relationship, if you truly love the way God loves, you'd always be looking for resolution of a problem, not for skipping around it, skipping over it, ducking under it, yeah. manoeuvring around putting it, it off for later. putting it off for later, yeah. blaming it on someone else, justifying that it exists and minimising it. You wouldn't do any of those things because, 
because you desire resolution. Yeah. And, and if, you're, if you truly loved yourself, you would firstly desire resolution for yourself, for your own sake. Mm -hmm. So the woman in this example that we're giving, if she truly loved herself, she would desire resolution. Yeah. And the man in this position, if he truly loved herself, himself, he would desire resolution as to why he is constantly being asked to betray himself yeah. by his partner. He would, he would be you know, wanting resolution of that problem. And if both parties really loved the way God loves or love in a pure manner, they would both be desiring resolution of this problem rather than just skipping around it or negotiating it constantly. Every time you negotiate or skip around the truth, you're negotiating and skipping around love. And as a result of both of those courses of action, you will never have a happy relationship. Mm -hmm. It will always be a codependent relationship or a degrading, st or a stagnant or degrading relationship. It can never grow. Yeah. It can never be closer than it currently is if you do those things. Which is very powerful, isn't it? Really, yeah. you're saying unless we choose to love ourselves in a real way, yep. our relationship cannot grow. Cannot grow. It, 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 it uh, may satisfy us because we're in addiction, but we cannot grow. But over time, God's laws are designed to highlight the of errors. Course. And so it satisfaction now cannot last. Cannot last. It's a, it's a, unfortunately, it's going to be something that's very, very, in terms of time period, it's going to be a very short time period where we actually feel satisfied. And because all of God's laws are working to correct the lack of love of self yeah. in one or both of the parties involved in the relationship, sooner or later, the lack of love of self is going to be exposed both to yourself and to your partner. Yeah. And that, of course, is going to cause a degradation of the relationship if one or both of you refuse to address it. So, so at some point in time, you're going to have to seek resolution. Yeah. My suggestion is desire resolution. Love desires resolution yes. every yes. time. So if I notice I do not have a lack, uh, that I do not love myself, that I have a lack of love of self, or I notice that my partner has a lack of love of herself, desire resolution. Look at the areas where we have a lack of love of ourselves, firstly towards ourselves yes. and focus on resolving them, independent of whether our partner wants us to resolve them or not. Mm. Because if we truly loved ourselves, we would desire resolution of our own problems Yeah. Yep. every time. Yeah. There's a few other examples we've listed here sure. around. Um, so responsibility for financial welfare. Yes, this is something that's really big in relationships. Often one person takes responsibility for the financial welfare of the relationship. Mm. In other words, for both parties in the relationship. Now, sometimes uh, this is done by choice, but frequently it's not done by choice. It's done because one party is always disclaiming financial responsibility. Yes. So a person who takes full financial responsibility, it takes, examines their, their, their own emotional reasons why they attract a lack of funds mm -hmm. in their personal life. They address those things emotionally. They pay all their bills. They never allow a bill to go unpaid. They never allow a situation to go beyond, you know, what's... To spend beyond your means. To you never mean? spend beyond their means. Mm -hmm. They never allow a situation to go beyond what is reasonable either for the sake of others. Mm -hmm. If you love yourself, you wouldn't do it. So in other words... If I, if I had money, if I had a bill with you and I knew that you desperately needed that money back, yeah. right, then my own love of self would motivate me to give the money back. No matter what I had to do to get the money aside from doing other you know, unloving things, yes. I would work harder or whatever else I need to do in order to give that money back. I would take full self-responsibility for my and financial accountability for every single thing I have done. Mm -hmm. Now, we see in relationships this often is not occurring on lots of levels where a person isn't doing this. You sometimes see it with a husband. He often has the viewpoint, I go out to work, I bring home the bacon, I just give it over to her and she has to spend it white. You know, like yeah. he's now not taking responsibility for how things are spent. He's not involved in the decisions. Now, some wives are like that. Mm -hmm. But but it's not actually, it's a man, so, eventually it's going to cause a problem because he's going to disclaim responsibility for every decision. Yeah. Sometimes the wife we see um, saying, oh, I'm going to get this money of my husband's and spend it on all the things that you know, we need to pay the bills of and everything and spend a bit on myself and a bit on the rest of the family. But if I get any money for myself, 
That's for me. Mm-hmm. And I don't share it with the family. We see a lot of women doing that. And why do they do that? Like, it's definitely lack of love of self that causes that to occur yes. for a start. It's also a lack of ethics and morally yeah. to do that, yeah. to de- demand that somebody else takes care of you with all your essential needs and then you'll take care of yourself with all the things that you have in excess is actually immoral yes. and also a lack of love of self in the end because if you truly care for yourself, you'd want to you know, provide for your own financial welfare for your needs as well as for your wants and desires. Yeah. So, you know, you can see in this area, uh, a lot of families have a lot of arguments and disputes. But, but again, if we were all loving ourselves, um, it, was, it would be highly unlikely that such disputes and arguments would occur. Yeah. Now, each person in the relationship is going to have a different... If, they, each, if each person in a relationship is a, is a work in progress, mm-hmm. then it means that each person may have a different level of... Uh, resolution of the different emotions within them that cause the, their financial instability. So in other words, one person might have a fairly good uh, soul-based condition when it comes to financial self, self-sustainability and financial responsibility. And so they attract enough funds to look after some of themselves, care for themselves, you know, and so forth, and pay the bills and all those kind of things. Another person in the relationship might have completely the opposite emotions and therefore want the first person to look after everything. That wouldn't be loving. Mm. So if one of us in the relationship realised that actually we're not personally attracting many funds ourselves by what we do then and by how we work and so forth, then they would need, if they took full self-responsibility for their own love of self, what they would do is they would try to look at the emotional reasons as a high priority as to why they are in that condition. No matter how wealthy their family is as a result of their husband's effort or wife's effort. Yes. So uh, see, this is where it gets down to the fact that you wouldn't always rely on the other person to do what you want. You would always care for yourself. And if you noticed that you weren't attracting a large amount of funds yourself as a result of the things that you were doing, then you have to question whether you're, you're truly in your desires and passions, firstly. Secondly, whether you've resolved emotional issues surrounding money, mm-hmm. which are a lot uh, to do a lot with how we view daddies and mummies and what, what yes. daddies and mummies should do for us. Yeah. And we would want to resolve those particular emotional issues because it, it's an issue of a, of self, a love of self. Yeah. Not, even if we don't ask any other questions, it's an issue of love of self. Once we truly love ourselves with regard to finances and we are truly in an emotional condition where we've addressed all the emotions surrounding the love of self with our finances, we will personally attract the finances we need to not only care for ourselves but also share what we have with others. Yeah. And that's the reality. So if that's not occurring, it's because of something going on within ourselves that we haven't taken responsibility for. Yeah, and and maybe the final thing that I wanted to raise, because it is something that I feel most people don't view as an issue of love of self, and that is about personal fears. Mm. When we feel it's actually an issue of my lack of love of myself when I don't want to work through my fears. Exactly. And I see... Can we sort of clarify the situation for for anyone Uh, who's listening? That's like me having a certain fear. Let's say I'm afraid that you might leave me, right? So I'm afraid of that. The way I get to avoid that fear is by you wanting to be with me all the time mm-hmm. and by you being with me all the time and, you, and, and me keeping a track of you, where you are and what you're doing all the time and not having any trust in you really. Mm-hmm. But by you feeding that addiction, I get to avoid my fear of you leaving. Mm-hmm. Now, a person who takes true personal responsibility wouldn't avoid the fear of you leaving. What they would do instead is they would see the fear that exists within them and work through the emotional reasons by experiencing the fear and getting to underlying grief, work through the emotional reasons as to why the fear exists. Mm. So, So they would not expect their partner to help them avoid their fear. And this is, yeah, this is also where I was going to even go even more basic. 
climbing a ladder, dealing with a conflict <laughs> yeah. uh, with an external situation, situation. paying a bill, um, yep. going down the street the and door. doing the shopping, <laughs> yeah. cooking a meal. Yeah, dealing with mechanical issues. Yes. Or, so uh, opening a jar, yeah. you know, all these things are things that I know personally I begin to look at because just because you're able to do them and I can call on you to do them, yep. if I have a fear in that area, that if I love myself purely based on that, if yep. I love myself, yes. I won't always rely on you to deal with those things. Exactly. I will want to address that fear within me because I know that it's limiting my experience. Exactly. And most people in relationships feel that there is a barter system. Exactly. And most people feel loved. If I take away your fear of being left and you take away my fear of heights and you, you know, all these things, oh, we, we're happy. We love each other. We now. love each other. Yeah. We're content. And that's called a codependent addiction. Yes. <laughs> it's not love. <laughs> but this issue of dealing with fear, if it exists within us yeah. as an issue of self love, that I feel that's really um, exactly crucial. Very, very important. And you think yeah. about how many times one person in a relationship rejects that the other person in a relationship has to get rid of their fear in some way. And how annoying it is to receive that constantly when you're not afraid of that thing. Yes. <laughs> it's just, it's such an annoyance in the relationship as well. It's a constant thing of, uh, like, well, why can't you deal with that yourself? Oh, because you're afraid again. Why don't you want to get over your fear? Because you don't, you know? Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Do you really want to love the way God loves? No, not yeah. at all. Because God loves without fear. Yeah. So, so if you're wanting your partner to address all of your fears to make all of your fears go away. You're not loving the way God loves. Mm -hmm. And if you are unwilling to work through those issues, you don't even want to love the way God loves. Yeah. You just want your partner to get rid of all of your addictions. And all of your addictions are covering over your fears. That's what they're doing. Yeah. So you want your partner to, make, to, just, to just paste over all of your fears and make everything look good when it's not. It's far better if you love yourself what you would do is that you would always want to feel your way through your fears, recognise them, and take full emotional responsibility by addressing them, by feeling what their underlying causes are. Why, mm -hmm. why, did I, why have I become afraid of spiders? Mm -hmm. Why is it that I can't you know, get a spider down from the thing and take it outside? if that's what you, you're afraid of. Why is it that you're scared of snakes and you can't even you know, do anything with that? Why is it that you, you, you're afraid to even cook for yourself? Why is that? You're afraid to go shopping. Why is that? Mm -hmm. you know, why don't you like getting up and speaking to other people? What, what's the problem there? You know, all of these different fears that you have are limits to your own life. Mm. They are like bars you've put on your own prison and therefore... If you allow them to remain, you are not being loving for them for your, towards yourself. You are imprisoning yourself. You are enslaving yourself to your own fears. That's not loving. And then to expect your partner to do that, well, that's a whole separate question in itself yeah. because that relates to how much you don't care about them. Yes. You know, expecting them to make your fears go away shows or demonstrates how little you care for them. But we know just from looking at this very first question that if I'm ignoring love of myself in any area, then just it is just a fact that it will have a negative impact on my relationship, my has sexual to. partner relationship. Yep. It has to because God's laws are constructed in such a way that God's laws are always going to expose our lack of love of self. Mm -hmm. So sooner or later, there's going to be a degradation in any relationship that we have, because we are in half the relationship. You know, in the case of a, a loving partnership, we are half of the relationship. So if we don't love ourselves in this relationship, there is going to be a degradation of the relationship at some point. At some point, it's impossible for the relationship to grow. Yes. It's going to stagnate initially and then die, yeah. actually if we do not address this issue of lack of love of self. Exactly. And even if you, even if there is some form of codependence that's not even troubling my partner, yes. say in the instance of fear. I'm so I'm happy to... Is you're not even troubled yet. Yeah, I'm yeah. happy to say your mum looks beautiful because that's how I feel. <laughs> yeah. you know? sure, and whatever. I'm continually like asking you, asking you, yeah. avoiding some emotion within myself. Which is the fear of your own personal appearance in the example. Yeah. yeah. Then 
God's laws are designed that even if it doesn't cause a problem with you, yep. there's going to be a problem within me that impacts on how I can love you. There will also be a problem with me in the end. There, eventually. Because, because sooner or later I will feel the emotional demand that's coming Absolutely. at me to, to supply an answer that you're not personally satisfying within yourself. So, so there will also be an emotional degradation or stagnation in my own development by allowing it to continue. Yeah, so, so this is the thing is that every one of these things that are unchallenged actually affect both parties sooner or later. They are going to affect both parties in the relationship. So every time you avoid the question of what would my love of myself motivate me to do for myself, you are avoiding a large part of your responsibility and your necessities in the relationship if you're ever going to have a relationship. And if you're going to avoid those things, God's laws are all going to be focused on trying to bring you into a conscious awareness of such things, which means that your relationship is going to get more troublesome and more troublesome and more troublesome until you see yes. what, what's going on. Yes. And I suppose I was highlighting that even if the trouble doesn't come from the person facing you, yep. the trouble is it's going to be there. It's going to... Exactly. Be, and so exactly. your partner might start reflecting it or you might start to feel dissatisfied in some way or what, whatever it is, God's laws are going to try to expose it. Yes, and un yeah. unhealed emotions, I, I quite often liken them to a, a never-ending whirlpool. Mm. No matter how much you throw at it, it's always going to get sucked away. Yeah. So, so the problem with a lack of love of self is that no matter how much somebody loves you, you're still not going to be satisfied in the end yeah. because, because you'll still not love yourself. Yeah. So it's like a never-ending vortex of energy coming from your partner to make you feel good about yourself that eventually is going to exhaust your partner and never satisfy and you yourself. Yeah. So, so at the end of the day, it's going to cause a, a destruction of the relationship. So, so if that's what you want, then keep doing it. But I would suggest to the majority of people, look, stop. Ask this first supplementary question. What would my love of myself uh, want me to do for myself? Yeah. And if I, if I really address that question with responsibility, then, then I would not allow such situations to occur. I would not allow myself to get away with doing things that, that are unloving towards myself mm -hmm. and I would not allow myself to not take personal responsibility. In other words, I would force myself into taking personal <laughs> responsibility in some way for my actions and decisions. And I would feel when I don't want to do it because every time I don't want to do it, I'm demonstrating to myself that I don't want to love the way God loves. And I would feel that. I would allow myself to be real about that, feel that and work my way through becoming consciously aware of why I'm doing that. Mm -hmm. That's what I would do if I fully was motivated fully to love myself. Mm. Good. Great. Something else that I'd like to mention before we get on to uh, the next questions are that poor parenting is actually the primary cause of the lack of motivation inside of people to, to, lo to love themselves. Mm -hmm. And if I can give some examples how this is the case. Most parents ask the child while it's developing to betray itself, to betray its feelings, its emotions, its sexual uh, responses and its own development spiritually to, for the sake of the parent. Mm -hmm. So from a very young age, most children are being asked to betray themselves and they're being taught by their parents that betraying yourself is the way in which you have a loving relationship. So that, that's, that's one side of the coin. So most of the time when we betray ourselves, it's because we've been taught to betray ourselves by our parents. And that's where we need to go for emotional healing on the subject. The second way parents uh, cause problems with the lack of love of self is by taking too much responsibility for their children. When we take too much responsibility for our children as a parent, we are teaching our child to not take personal responsibility for itself, mm -hmm. not take personal responsibility for its own life, not take personal responsibility for its own emotions, its own spiritual development, its own physical needs and its own sexual needs. As a result of that, we are teaching the child to become dependent upon another to have those, these needs satisfied. 
And therefore we're teaching the child to not love itself. So these are the two primary problems that most parents face that cause these particular problems in the child. Now, when the child grows up and into the relationship, the areas that they're going to need to find the causes of these problems are all going to resolve around one of those two issues with their parents. Or both. Or both issues. Because you know, usually it's one issue on one side, you know, on one subject and another issue, a lack of responsibility on another issue. It's usually a mixture. It's like, so, so for example, many parents uh, want the child to betray itself when it comes to some of its physical needs um, because the parent doesn't want to supply all of the physical needs. Right? But at the same time, the parent doesn't want the child to take responsibility for its emotional feelings. It's because the parent's constantly trying to ask the child to not cry or telling the child they shouldn't cry and all those kind of things. So, so often it will be a mixture of these particular two things that have occurred. Not on the same subject, usually on different subjects. Because uh, I can sort of feel how I was asked to do both on the same subjects, you know, to betray what I really felt yes. in order to, um, to make my parents feel okay and then also that they could take responsibility for... Yeah, I see what you're saying. You it's can't on a different subject. Yeah, so yeah. It's like in certain situations you were asked to do one thing, yeah. in certain situations you were asked to do another thing. Yeah. And often those two things were opposites, in fact. Yeah. But they were different situations. It depended on what the parent wanted in that moment. Yes. So if the parent wanted you to betray yourself, you did. If the parent wanted you to, wanted to take personal responsibility for something you should have took, taken responsibility for, they did. Yeah. In order to feel good about themselves as a parent, they might do that. Yeah. And, and the problem is that it's the mixture of those two things that causes so much confusion with a lack of love of self. And what we finish up doing is we bring this lack of love of self into the relationship. Yeah. And unless we're prepared to heal it, we're going to have not very, well, uh, not very good relationships. They're not going to be very happy. We're not going to be happy in the relationship. Our, par our partner is definitely not going to be happy in the relationship. We'll have temporary happiness when we're codependently addicted to mm -hmm. sort of satisfying the emotions, but it can't last because all of God's laws are focused on correcting both the problem. Yes. All of God's laws are focused on correcting the lack of love of self in terms of betraying ourselves and also correcting the lack of taking self-responsibility, personal responsibility. So sooner or later, we're, you know, all of our God's laws are all all focused on trying to get rid of these particular problems within ourselves. So um, I think if we understand the source of many of these kind of emotional injuries, then at least we know where we're going to have to head emotionally in order to resolve them. And that's an important part yeah. of solving these questions.